This video is sponsored by NordVPN. You can get a huge discount of a two year plan plus a bonus gift with the link in the description. Look, I know you're online all the time. Online at home, online at work, online at the way between work and home, while you're abroad. I get it, there's no shame here. I'm online right now. Why? That's none of your business. And it stays none of your business because my onlinery is cool and protected with NordVPN. I just connect to one of its 5500 odd servers for peace of mind. You got your double data encryption for better anonymity and as their servers are all over the world you can virtually plant yourself in one of 60 countries to enjoy local services. Like streaming platforms unavailable in your physical location. And look, there's 24-7 customer support and 30 day money back guarantee so you can rest easy. And as a Chain Bear viewer you get a hefty discount and a bonus gift when you sign up for a two year plan by clicking the link in the description. NordVPN.com slash Chain Bear. Thanks NordVPN. Now enjoy the video. So a question that I and a lot of people still get asked a lot is, why is it that Slipstream is such a good thing that drivers seem to desperately chase for a bit of extra speed, but dirty air is such a bad thing that slows the cars down? when, you know, both things are just the effect of following another car. And I did actually do a video on this in the way way back when with a janky bit of powerpointing and a webcam microphone. But since it's still asked a plenty, I thought it deserves a full remaster that I can be proud of. Now it's easy to forget as we walk around that air is physically present all around us. This sounds a bit silly, but on a human scale at normal human speeds, it's easy to completely forget it's there at all. That is until you, for example, stick your face close to an open car window while traveling and get absolutely blasted with the stuff until your eyes water and your hair gets knotted. Or if you just remind yourself of Jeremy Clarkson's atom face. Yes, air certainly is made of stuff. It has mass and pressure and buoyancy, all the good stuff. It's easy enough to walk through, but it gets harder and harder to push through as you try moving faster and faster. Air, like water, is a fluid. And if you've gone swimming or even just moved your hand through a body of water, you know how much force it can take to push through it. It resists you. And it's probably easier to keep thinking of air as water in this video as the human experience in water is much closer to how an F1 car experiences air. It is thick and resistant. If you're moving on a little raft and you stick a flat hand or an oar face into the water to your left, the left side will break as the water resists it and the raft will turn to the side as the right side outpaces the left. Similarly, if an F1 car would stick a big flat piece of air onto one side, it too will be pulled in that direction as the braking takes effect from the air resisting it. The fluid air resisting forward motion is drag. It's what keeps a parachutist from plummeting to earth and it's what holds an F1 car back as it tries to accelerate. As the car powers forward, it is resisted backward by the air it's trying to push through. And the amount of drag force pulling back on the car depends a lot on the size and shape of the car as well as the density of the air itself. So if F1 cars were just big cubes on wheels, they would experience a much higher drag force than the pointy, slippery shapes they actually are. But whatever the shape of the car or the thickness of the air, the size of the drag is always proportional to the velocity of the car squared. Now this is a dramatic effect. So say at 50 kilometers an hour, your car experiences this amount of drag force. It doesn't matter what the exact value is, just call it F or whatever. If you double your speed to 100 kilometers an hour, the drag increases by two times squared. So you're now experiencing four times the drag you did at 50 kilometers an hour. At 150 kilometers an hour, three times the original speed, you'll have nine times the original drag. At 200 kilometers an hour, you'll be fighting against 16 times the original drag. And by 350 kilometers an hour, which is the kind of top speed you'll be reaching on the straights, the drag force is now 49 times that of the drag you felt at 50 kilometers an hour. Now 50 kilometers an hour is basically nothing in an F1 car, but try and remember sticking your hand safely out of a car window at 30 miles an hour and how thick the air feels pulling back on your hand. Now imagine 50 times that amount. It's a lot. And F1 cars are pulling a lot of power overcoming that. Those rear wings are dragging hard. And that's why DRS even exists. To flatten the wing and alleviate a bit of that resistive force. But that's why the slipstream is so powerful. That's why you see drivers positioning themselves behind other cars on long straights and in the races and in quali. When a car passes through the air at such speeds, it pushes the air away on mass, creating a low density hole in its wake. 
and with less air in the slipstream, that's less air to be fighting against and a significantly less drag. And when the forward force to rearward drag balance tips forward, that results in better acceleration and a quicker path to maximum velocity. So on long straights, slipstream can be super powerful. You don't have to take as long getting to high speeds, and overall you'll take a shorter time from corner exit to corner entry. And high speeds mean overtaking. You can use the slipstream to accelerate harder while your rival is fighting the drag and outpace them down to the next corner. Lovely. Now we saw a great example of that at the start of the Russian Grand Prix. Sochi has a very long run to the first braking zone at turn two. Russell from third got a better launch than Sainz in second, but Russell was out on his own, pushing against the full wall of air and experiencing maximum drag. Sainz though tucked himself into Norris' slipstream and was able to accelerate at such a pace that he took the lead by turn two. What a visible difference it made. Okay, so dirty air then. We talk about how following in another car's wake is so good for speed and aero efficiency, but we also talk about how following in another car's dirty air slows you down and makes overtaking so much harder. It's a real bugbear of F1 and the massive 2022 rule changes have a lot of focus around fixing that specific issue. Everyone complains about it. I even made a song about it. So how do these two ideas marry up consistently? Well, it's actually pretty simple really, and as with all things, it's about the balance between cornering and straight line speed. Before we even consider other cars' aero wakes, we can consider the car on its own. It has been designed and tuned to master the trade-off between going as fast as possible on the straights and being able to rock it through the corners. Traits which get in each other's way. See, if you just wanted to go fast on a straight line, you wouldn't have this massive rear wing on the back, which acts basically like a big parachute for all intents and purposes. They add masses of drag, which, as we just covered, is bad for outright speed. But to turn through the corner at the kind of speeds F1 cars are capable of, you need to push the tyres into the track hard. The relationship between how hard an object is pushed against the surface and how much it resists sliding is linear. And that just means if you push it down twice as hard, it will resist being pushed along the surface twice as hard. If you're going to throw an F1 car around a corner at 150 km an hour, obviously you're going to have to fight the natural urge of the car to just fly off the outside of the corner. And these are 750 odd kilogram machines, that's a lot of momentum to overcome. So to get the tyre to grip hold of the track and allow them to take corners that fast, you need downforce pushing them firmly into the ground. Downforce comes from the aero. The weight of the car alone isn't enough to push it down. While drag pulls the cars backward, downforce pushes the cars down. I've got videos where I go into actual aerodynamics in more detail, but to keep it simple here, just think that if we use the car's aero to force large masses of air upwards, then those large masses of air will be forcing the car downwards. No action without reaction and all that. So in this case, having a hefty load of thick air is useful to you. You can push against it and make it work for you. Back in our raft example, we could push the water with oars to propel and steer the craft. You push the water back, the water pushes you forward. But imagine trying to paddle and the water just not really being there where you need it, or being thin, bubbly, inconsistent like there's nothing really to push against. Well, then you couldn't really control your raft well at all. And that's the thing with dirty air. When following a car around a corner, it messes up all the nice, thick, consistent air you need to generate downforce. So you can't push as hard in the corners, you have to go slower, you fall further behind and you lose opportunity to stay with the car ahead for when overtaking opportunities come on a straight or into a braking zone. I mean, dirty air is a little more specific than just the big hole left in the air behind the leading car, F1 Aero is designed to do very specific actions like generate or boost powerful vortices off the front wing or throw out some of the air like a wall to dispel the messy air from the tyres. And all of these effects create chaotic conditions in the air behind so the air isn't just thin, it's messy, disruptive, unpredictable. The 2022 rules reduce designers' ability to make such a mess with their overbody aerodynamics in an effort to improve quality of air behind and give chasing cars a chance to stay close through the corners. We'll see how well that works soon enough. But TLDW for this video, cars create wakes and mess behind them that reduce drag and downforce. Drag is bad for straight line speeds, but downforce is good for cornering speeds. Hope that's clear. <laughs>